gonna take a quick look at the Honda HPD Ridgeline. We're gonna discuss what it is, what it was inspired by, and the pros and cons. But I will say this, when the Ridgeline was invented, we didn't have as many choices in terms of SUVs, CUVs, and of course something like the Hyundai Santa Cruz now. And I feel like this truck or product is kind of in a purgatory. And you look on the outside and you look on the inside and it's definitely, uh, I don't know. So if you blindfolded somebody and put them in this driver's seat and you didn't see the exterior, you'd think it's a Honda SUV. The interior is almost the same. The feeling, the configurability, and the storage capacity is great. You look at the doors, there's a place to put bottles. There's knick-knack storage. The center console is enormous. It's almost like a minivan layout. And it's very comfortable, open and airy. You can be a big person and fit everything in here. Of course, you have the Honda stuff, the rear seat configurability, the way that they do the tailgate or liftgate design in the back, and the bed is very interesting for its class. And again, Honda is unapologetic about this. It's designed for somebody that does not like trucks, does not want a truck experience, does not want the brashness of that. They want like an SUV car experience in their truck. And some people hate that and some people love it. I will say some of the negatives is, you know, th the interior feels like it's a bit dated. I mean, the steering wheel design is definitely on the bigger side. It, it's got vinyl on it. Of course, this is all for durability, people that don't need all the fancy materials but it just has this element that it's uh, a few generations old. The infotainment's a bit slow, and the, the biggest thing that bothers me is how horrible the audio system is in here. You know, it's a pretty quiet cabin, but this is the probably the worst audio system I've ever heard and tested. It has this strange filtering. It's like the amplifier doesn't have enough power or it loses power, so when you get bass or any type of hard bass note or mid-range like punch, it basically, you hear the volume level lower on all the treble, so everything gets muddled together and compressed. So if you're just listening to a clean vocal and then there's some bass element that comes in, the vocals get lowered down. It's just, it's horrible. I can't believe they let this out the door. But then again, maybe people that are buying this for fleet vehicles don't care about that, but it's one of those things. It's such a nice refined experience in here that the audio system is a huge letdown. But let's head in the shop. We're gonna briefly discuss kind of the mechanical side of this. So here we are, the HPD Ridgeline. I covered this truck in detail when it first came out and there's not a lot that's changed, but we do have this special trim level, Jack, so tell me about it. So this is the HPD Ridgeline and instead of me telling you about it, let's have Jeff Proctor who drives Honda's HPD Baja Ridgeline explain what this thing is. I'm Jeff Proctor, team principal and driver of the Baja Ridgeline. The inception of the program came back in 2015 when Honda decided to build a concept vehicle for the Gen 2 Ridgeline that came out uh, later that year, labeled as a 2017. And uh, we launched it at SEMA, followed by a year of racing, and it was a wild success. Uh, the Honda executives loved the program, and uh, consequently, we've been racing for the last six seasons uh, with this Baja Ridgeline. Uh, we get engineering support from HPD, which builds our endurance sports car engine that we use. It's a 3.5 liter V6 twin turbo, commonly found in DPI cars in the IMSA series. Definitely a unique sound in the deserts of Baja California in the US. It's something that they don't normally hear because we race in a V6. So I was fortunate enough just recently to ride along with Jeff Proctor at the IndyCar race at Mid-Ohio. It was a rather special experience, and I know that truck has almost nothing to do with this particular oh, Ridgeline. <laughs> I know, that's surprising. <laughs> what they've done for this is an appearance package. What you get is bronze wheels, more tough-looking black plastic, and a couple HPD badges. But past that, this is the tried-and-true Honda Ridgeline. Which but it's is... HPD-tuned black plastic. Oh man, that makes this thing Baja ready. You forgot one thing. What's that, Mark? It's got Japanese NK wheels. <sighs> Those are hot. So probably that is essentially the most important part of this because it reduces unsprung weight. They look a, a bit different, although you could argue the style kind of clashes with this truck a bit. So just briefly, Jack, tell me a little bit about what they're trying to do here. So Mark, this is based on the, this is a Ridgeline, which means it's based on the Honda Pilot. However, they've done a pretty good job strengthening up key components to make this more of a truck. However, it still is probably the best riding, least compromised road variant of a smaller vehicle or smaller truck because it's based 
on an SUV. Yes. So it rides properly, it has great suspension tuning, and it still tows what the other trucks do in this segment, which is 5,000 pounds, which is a actually pretty decent amount for a vehicle like this, which just has a naturally aspirated V6. Speaking of that, this is the tried and true J-Series V6 with its own VSA tuning, which is vehicle stability control for this, which has a mud, rocks, and whatever, sand mode. Which and this is, is Honda's equivalent of SH all-wheel drive, which yes. you hear in the Acura lineup, and they use a torque vectoring rear differential, which is very unique in something like this. And granted, it is it has that SUV underpinning, but it gives them the flexibility to transfer power to either one wheel or the other 100% and then the split the torque front and back. So it's a very versatile all wheel drive system. Yep, and this is again, the tried and true V6, which means 280 horsepower, nine speed automatic and cylinder deactivation. But with that all said, Mark, I think it's time for us to hit the road. All right. Worried that this isn't a CVT, Mark? How can I drive something like this? I can't believe it's got a naturally aspirated engine and a traditional geared automatic. This jack. makes me sick. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh my God, be careful. My $80,000 forged wheels that are in the bed of this thing. I don't want them to fly out. So Jack, Ridgeline, HPD, it has done nothing to the drivetrain, done nothing to the suspension, and uh, it basically feels like a Ridgeline. <laughs> <laughs> feels like every other Ridgeline, and the good thing about that is when you truly drive this on regular roads in your daily commute, you forget that this is trying to be a truck or trying to be an off-roader, and well not an off-roader but you know what i mean it doesn't have a ride quality that grates on your nerves the engine's smooth the transmission's smooth it doesn't jounce it doesn't bounce unloaded loaded up i love driving this and again honda knew that most people will use this on a daily commute and they this don't. is the kind of truck you should be buying if you are going to drive it all the time and you want a mid-sized truck the reality is if you are a truck person though, you want that rough ride, you want the high T levels that come from a body on frame truck, you don't get that in this thing. I will say this is the truck I'd want to drive though. I prefer being in this to like a Tacoma, Colorado, or Ranger any day of the week. Do let's, you disagree? Let's be honest, the, the big problem with this is it doesn't have a cool factor of a truck. You know, it doesn't look like a truck, even though they've tried to, to give you the fake seams and all that. So I think most of the people that have come up with that type of vehicle in their bloodline, you get in this and it's like, it's like the uh, the equivalent of the, the Edge ST or the Explorer ST, like some of these fake like moniker sports car SUVs. I think that's what people hate about it. And But unlike oh, yeah. one of those fake SUVs, this is actually really a truck, right? It's got the same towing capacity as some, some of its competitors. Yeah, it's other mid-sized trucks. It has a real bed and the cabin has been ruggedized, it just doesn't have the public perception of Yeah, there's of absolutely, no, let's, let's just get that, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this thing. Nothing wrong with it. It's completely satisfactory in every single way. I just think that the truck universe is so extreme now, and we're gonna pass truck after truck and SUV after SUV, this is kind of fallen by the wayside. This is like on the lower list of somebody that would actually want to buy something. So this is going to cater to that very small group of people, probably like us, yeah. that want our truck not to be a truck, but then it's like, what's the point? You exactly, know? <laughs> yeah. But hey, I mean, you do get a naturally aspirated V6, and I forget, I, I, not, not I forget, but it's nice to hear a Honda V6 that sounds like something. What's funny to me is this sounds better than the TLX Type S. Oh my God, yeah. I mean, we, we're joking around about that, how like the Odyssey sounds better than their sportier cars at this point. And we just, well, I just got done dealing with doing the uh, Camry hybrid and then of course the ES350 with the V6. And this is the same type of thing. You know this is going away. It's not gonna last. So I feel like in about 10, 15 years, people are going to be like, oh man, the Ridgeline was pretty cool. <laughs> you know? And then people are going to be clamoring for it like the, they were the element. I can't wait to see these on Jalopnik and yeah, Radwood and right. bring a trailer and all those other things. They go, oh man, is that that truck that's not a truck? Oh man, how much did you pay? It'll be like $50,000 <laughs> for something like this. 
But I don't know, you know, really, if you're if you're looking for something like this, there's nothing wrong with it. It just, you basically have so many options now. Yeah, that it's the best riding, best driving, mid-sized truck that isn't much like a real truck. Yeah. So with that, Mark, let's head into the final thoughts. Final thoughts on the Ridgeline HPD. And to be completely honest, I feel like this is a lost opportunity. You slept this on here, some wheels, just essentially some badges, and then you forget about this part. What does that even mean? And I think Jack had a good insight to what Honda Performance Development is doing on the racing side with the trucks, with race cars, but it doesn't really show in any of their street products. And this is not a good representation of this brand at all. You know, I, I think Toyota does a good job separating out their TRD products, kind of like the Nerf ones all the way to the TRD Pro. We don't even really get that with Honda at all. And I got this sense driving this truck that they don't really know what they want to do with this. And the argument continually over the years is, well, why not just make a real truck? And what is a real truck? Well, it has a bed. But most people consider a real truck to have body on frame, which this doesn't have. And they're catering to the Honda clients or those clients that don't want that. So when you drive it, yes, it drives like an SUV. It's soft, it's quiet, it's compliant. It's for people that don't like trucks. But then again, the SUV market has gotten so good that you just, again, make the argument, just get an SUV at that point. And I think most people would and are doing that. So what do you do with this? Do you go all in? Costs a lot of money. I don't know that's where Honda is at in their development. Or do you just kind of slap this stuff on here and that's what it feels like. It just feels slapped on. I mean, I'm glad we got to see what they're doing on the back end with the racing side. I just like to see a little bit more of that in a product like this or any Honda product for that matter. It doesn't remove the good things about this, but it doesn't exactly fix the complaints that people have about the Ridgeline. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.